Folks, I'm telling you, when you're dealing with the public, when you're dealing with citizens, when you're dealing with the masses, you're talking about dealing with a dynamic range of personalities and beliefs and on like that, okay? And one of the things that you have to continue to consider is how the masses uh, or how the powers that be try to influence the masses in certain ways. So we saw at the beginning of the year pretty much a... Um, a preview into things that we were going to be seeing with the uh, government shut down over the border wall and we saw how that impacted stocks and they were teasing that snap benefits may no longer uh, be hashed out and, and things like that right so i'm just giving you some pointers and some insight into what's going on because i think the economy is being set up right now economy it doesn't matter what you think about trump doesn't matter what what things are looking like right now you have to be, you can't be short-sighted. You have to look further down the road. You have to look at the long game. Look at this. Uh, just breaking right now, the Dow plummets 750 points as the U.S. trade war escalates. All right, but that's that's only an addendum to the part of store closures accelerating and may top 12,000 in 2019. And they're just, I'll leave links in the description below, but even stores like Starbucks and Pepsi is ones that you think would be doing relatively well in this economy are laying people off. Remember this is, they can't even stay afloat in what's, what's touted as the greatest economy that's been in, a, in, in years. So these businesses can't even stay afloat. And we're not talking about mom and pop shops. We're talking about prominent uh, store closures store closures among retailers and others okay and this is just one facet of this uh, thing that we're looking at here because it can go many ways we see that the Chinese US trade war is back at it again right the the escalations and tensions were paused and now they're back at it with throwing tariffs at each other here's the thing if America wants the Chinese to buy more American products increasing the price of those products aren't going to get them to buy more. If America wants uh, American businesses to come back to the U.S. homeland, they're not going to come back if we continue to make it cumbersome to do so or haven't done anything to change the fact that it was fiscally cumbersome for these businesses in the first place. All right. And what we're really seeing happening is this is one government revenue. So this isn't like this stuff that we are getting. If we are getting anything is going back to the people and we're seeing deficits, uh, farms, trade, uh, finances and other sectors because of this so we're being impacted by this and i can totally see you know trump saying american citizens stay strong uh, we're going to work our way through this i know times are tough when you know bread is fifty dollars uh but we'll make our way through this and everybody will be like yeah he's doing the best we can for us you, you know you don't get to these positions of power without having capitulated in some way to the power pyramid players okay but that's not it that's not it uh we also have the feds that have cut interest rates for the first time since 2008 and you know that was where we the economy tanked back then and it tanked a few years before that or was on the the verge of it we had the dot-com bubble type deal and of course all the uh other economic crisis is going back which the federal reserve ben bernanke at least took credit for and said yeah uh, in regards to the great depression we did it we're sorry it won't happen again type deal and, and look what they're doing but when the feds cut the interest rates uh, this allows borrowing, for example, to become cheaper. So it's cheaper to put yourself into debt because what they think is you take out a loan, whether you're a business or an individual, you take out debt, money you don't have, and go spend the money that you don't have to go stimulate the economy. So they're trying to curtail the possibility of the economy tanking. And this is one of the ways they do that. All right. Well, that's one of the ways they say they do that. But we know the Federal Reserve is rot with malfeasance and practices that just come back on the people in a bad way. All right, and uh, here we go as well with the Senate having to pass a massive budget deal that lifts the debt ceiling. And it's, it's absolutely crazy. When, you, when, you, when we talk about the debt ceiling, it's funny because I've heard it put this way. It's like if you've got sewage in your house, you got a bunch of crap in your house, the pipes are busted. Do you try to shovel some of that crap out or do you raise the ceiling so you can get more in? Well, apparently, in the United States, you got to raise that ceiling, man, and that's what we're doing. So we, and it's always, it's always the same de debate. We've got to raise the ceiling, or else this whole thing is going to happen, right? America is going to default on its debt, or whatever it is. And the problem is, America has conditioned the people to act just like it. Okay, they're willing to pay a minimum payment for the rest of their life. They're willing to be financially irresponsible and spend money they don't have. And this is how they're intentionally putting America into a hole that they're not going to be able to get out of. We're going to be subservient to whatever entity, you know, uh, debuts on the scene when a uh, when American 
where America passes the torch over because they're not going to have any choice but to do that. And this is just another adjunct to that. And lastly, for what we're talking about here, I'm just hitting the high points, the potentialities, the high points. Uh, there's much smarter people than myself who've got this stuff already figured out and already looking uh, down the road at the indicators. Things do not look good. If you're an economist, uh, if you're one of these folks who are actually paying attention to what's going on, things do not look good. And this is the Strait of Hormuz. We've talked about it before. We, we keep seeing the increase, escalations, and tensions with Iran. Um, each country just can't stop seizing the other's oil tankers, okay? They're talking about smuggling oil and this, that, and the other thing, okay? This little Strait of Hormuz right here, if you see if there is detrimental engagement with Iran, uh, more than what we're seeing, and these aren't just, you know, tit for tat escalations and tensions, and it, it finally evolves into a conflict that could suck the entire region into a, a war, which could be what they want, uh, this area right here is one of the only areas, I think they call it the oil choke or something like that, uh, one of the only areas you can get uh, oil out for these Persian Gulf oil producers. And if this gets shut down or access to this is limited because of conflict between nations, we're talking about um, impacting not just American economies, but other economies around the world. And it seems like this, stabiliz this destabilization is poised to happen uh, once they decide they want to flip the switch. Okay, so these are four or five factors that I outline that are we're just indicators. The, if you wanted to look at the economy and you wanted to say all the indicators that could point to signs of a downturn, collapse, whatever, these are the things that we would look at. These are basically tender, tender boxes ready to be set ablaze with, with the wrong type of friction. Anyway, I'm just putting that out there. Hopefully you guys are prepared for some of this stuff. Um, I know not of us, not, not a lot of us are, but we, we've, we've got to be paying attention to what's going on because I think they want us fighting over the facile issues and paying attention to everything that's happening in the media. I think it's, um, it's pretty crazy that folks who generally aren't informed on any of this stuff generally don't know anything about what's happening in the news or the economy or their governments are suddenly all talking about the same thing right now. And that's these these shootings. It's being broadcast on every platform, um, every media channel. And of course, you know, the, the, the horror stream media just wants their clicks and views. So they're capitalizing off the tragedy. But it's it's also to get people to think a certain way about certain catalyzing incidents. Anyway, California Carter signing off.